So we, we now are in a position where internally our own people are more united, more strong, at least convinced in a way like, like never before. Now what does all that mean if China has all the control? I think fundamentally for us, um, the one thing we believe to be true is that everything changes. That the Chinese empire cannot last forever. No empire can last forever. This, this is the only thing we know to be true in this world. Um, how long is the question? But certainly corrupt governments and empires that you know, where corruption is endemic, where there is not real freedom, where people, where the truth is turned upside down and on its head. These kind of places, these kind of situations do not, cannot live and last forever. So we operate from the belief that things will change. It's just a matter of when and exactly what that change will look like. And so for us, it is, it is the, the job and the task is to believe changes, to know the change is coming, and to think what is the strongest possible position can we, that we can be in? Tibetans, Tibetan issue, Tibet supporters. What is it that we can do to be ready? That's all it's about, being ready for the moment when conditions change, like they did last March. Very few people would have said that that would have happened. Oh yes, in March 2008, Tibetans in all three provinces of historical Tibet will rise up and challenge the Chinese government in a way like not seen since the 1956-59 rebellion and uprising. Who would, have, who would have thought? But it happened. So again, now we prepare if change is coming, if China will see some kind of, whether it's transition to democracy, revolution, uh, slow change, fast change, peaceful, violent, whatever happens, there's opportunity in that for Tibetans. And the question of what we should do, we have a number of points that we believe, um, if, we can, if we can just stay the course, continue to make Tibet a global international issue, fight the battle on the outside, as we have for so many years. Basic public awareness, global public support campaigns, His Holiness travels the world gaining support, we educate people, someone new every day, a new community, a new documentary, all that, stay the course. Clearly we're presenting a problem for, for China in the international community and there's no reason to back down from what we've been doing. And in fact, we need to step up our actions. We have, we always talk about uh, global political support for Tibet in certain terms. We would say let's get that support to a new level, let's get action, let's see some action, let's see some real movement and action from governments in a way that we haven't seen. The Tibetan community in the US and Canada and Europe, everywhere now, we have a political base. We have a, a, a new kind of community where people are more settled and where we can lobby political leaders. This past March 10th, we did it. We went into the halls of power in Ottawa, in DC, and in many other places around the world and Tibetans in this room, some of our teenagers, some of our older established community members, went and met with um, members of Congress. Sat in their offices on March 10th and talked to them about the issue. The first ever organized global lobby day for Tibet. Just a little beginning, a little window into what we can do if we start to organize ourselves from a political grassroots base. Tibetan issue is only an issue if, it is, if we keep the pressure on. It's what's called a pressure issue. There's no economic incentive, certainly, for our politicians in Tibet. 
There's really nothing except the moral imperative and what we, our supporters of the Tibetan community, can do to pressure our own governments. So we need to stay the course, we need to up our political lobbying efforts, and at the same time, and this is where we'll talk about technology, we need to support and highlight the actions of Tibetans inside Tibet. For so long, the Chinese government has counted on the fact that they will keep Tibetans in Tibet quiet. And then it's only about us troublemakers in exile and the Dalai Lama. Now Tibetans inside Tibet are more active and doing more than we've seen in a long time. Making films, this film Leaving Fear Behind, made by the Tibetan filmmaker Tunde Wangchen. Sending out YouTube video, you know, putting videos on YouTube, speaking openly. This recent Losar, no Losar movement inside Tibet. Uh, where Tibetans said they weren't going to celebrate the, the Tibetan New Year. These are, that, that was a brilliant campaign, representing a new phase in our movement. It was a non-cooperation, non-compliance campaign that was very tricky. Because how, how does the Chinese government force Tibetans to celebrate? If you think about what that was and what it represented, February 2009, Tibet is under total lockdown. The Chinese are building troops and forces on the ground. Tibetans in 2009 and February are probably less free than ever before in terms of the, the security apparatus deployed in Tibet. And even in this climate, when we're thinking what can happen, nothing can really happen. The situation is so bad. Even in that climate, Tibetans organized a campaign and a brilliant one in that, because it was one that was very hard to stop. And it was about control. That's what this is all about, right? Power and control. And Tibetans demonstrated in February 2009, at one of the darkest times again in our history, that ultimately the power and control resides inside the community. We need more of that. We will see more of that. This is the kind of um, activity and campaign that those of us on the outside need to look for ways to support, enhance, publicize. Because as Beijing tries to exercise control over six million Tibetans inside Tibet, and they look for ways to keep the struggle alive, to maintain control over their lives, there is some there are some things that we can do from outside to bring the spotlight onto Tibet, to expose, you know, like in the darkness, right? The Chinese government wants to operate in the darkness. That's why they try to shut the internet. That's why they try to let no journalists go. They don't want you to go with your cameras and your video, you know, cameras to keep it dark. And this is just basic um, uh, grassroots activism. We need to bring the light in whatever way we can, even from here in New York City. So these are simple things. It almost sounds too easy. People are looking for some kind of answer that's more uh, complex, complicated. But the truth is that freedom movements, movements for rights and, and justice around the world and for hundreds and thousands of years don't happen because there's some you know, you don't have success, you don't win because you have some magic solution, bullet, potion. You win because you have, well, the ingredients we already have, determination, courage, strength, resilience. Six decades later, Tibetans are still fighting, perhaps stronger than ever before, perhaps more united than ever before. And a world that China wants to play China wants to be a part. The Chinese government wants to exercise control in, and the Chinese government wants to be in this world.